morning. Welcome to the RE Source. I'm Gary Hawkinson. I'm Ryan Hills. Hey, before we get started, Ryan, let's talk about our upcoming webinar, How to Help Distressed Homeowners. Real legal help, real answers. Hey, I am really excited about this because I get the phone call, and I'm sure if you're an agent, you've got the phone call. Hey, help me out. I'm upside yeah. down on my house. What do I do? Short sell, foreclose, or loan modification? Run away. Well, anyways, we're going to have a webinar. You're going to be able to talk specifically to a real estate attorney, not just a, an attorney, the top attorney in this area that's doing nothing but this, helping struggling homeowners. So if yes. you're a struggling homeowner, we invite you to come to the free webinar. If you're a loan officer, if you're an agent, you need to come to this webinar to get educated because I know you talk to just as many people as I do. And all the information is on the link right below. Click on the banner. We'll get you hooked up. We'll see you there. It's August 19th, 7 p.m. Speaking of homeowners and financial discussions, did you catch that uh, two-minute video on strategic foreclosures? Yeah, I thought it was great. And, you know, it really talked about what we brought to light a couple of weeks ago. But it's a great video talking about the unintended ramifications of strategic foreclosure. If you know somebody in that situation or thinking about that, send this video to them. Ryan, I am so confused. What is President Obama saying? Should I be renting or should I be buying? Gary, well, it's not hard to confuse you, but anyways, I was confused as well. I read the Washington Post article, and this thing was confusing because first Obama's saying maybe it's better to rent than buy, and then at the very end, he actually says something that I agree with. Let's unwind all the government spending and get back to the private sector. You know, we would love to know what you guys think. Would you please take a look at the article and write a comment and tell us what you think the president's trying to say? Ryan, we've talked a lot in the past about shadow inventory. The Real Estate Channel, great article, is specific to us. Yeah, in Seattle area alone, they have 946 homes that they foreclosed on as of July. Wow. Only 51 of those have hit the market, and out of those 51, only eight are over 300,000. You know, they're trying to improve their balance sheets possibly, you know, get Q2 looking better. I'll tell you what, if you're a real estate agent that knows how to sell homes over 300,000, I'd be talking to the banks and saying, list with me. Yeah. Can you explain to me how a mortgage insurance company comes out with huge profits last quarter? Yeah, actually I can. This is a story and you won't find it on the news anywhere because this just happened to me this week. I was talking to my buddy. He's a private investigator. Yeah. He says, Ryan, guess who my biggest client is? Uh, not me. MGIC, the mortgage insurance giant. Wow. So I'm like, all right, all right. So I'm listening on the phone call. He says, guess how many files they give me? I guess they just give them stacks and they say, hey, find fraud. And out of uh, 10 files, he says 80% of them, 8 out of 10 files, are actually fraudulent. So they say, find a way that we don't have to pay for our insurer on this loan. Yeah, and they're wow. not paying. Guess what? I hang up the phone with this guy. True story. I hang up the phone with this guy. Start doing my research for the show. The next story I look at, MGIC leads the way with $24 million in profit this year. Well, no crap. Well, it's not hard to make a lot of money when you know you take a bunch in that you're supposed to insure and just say, nah, we're not going to do that. How does that possibly work? And how does it affect you and I on the street. It's going to slow our recovery down if they're not paying the banks back the insurance that they owe them. You know, this is the kind of stuff that doesn't make the everyday news, and Ryan, I, I think you made a good point. Hey, you know what? I don't know what you want to do with this story, but it pissed me off, so I just wanted to talk about it and share it, so do what you want with it. The impact of social networking. We've talked a lot about it. Interesting news on MSNBC. Facebook is now being included in their customer satisfaction ratings with like 225 brick and mortar companies. Guess how they're doing? Horrible! <laughs> well, there is that. You know, it was interesting to see that they had a less than 60% satisfaction rating. A lot of that has to do, I think, with the commercialization of the site. Let's put it in terms you can understand. They're hated just as much as cable companies and airlines. Ooh, that's this bad. This is the most visited site in the world, and they're going to projected to have a billion users at the end of the year. Yeah, which is amazing. And we're on their bandwagon. I'm sure you are because Facebook's huge and it's awesome, but we just thought you should be aware because it sounds like there's trouble a-brewing. We've been talking a lot about how to help folks who are in distress. We've got the uh, loan modification petition, the homeowner helpline webinar. Uh, we've had a lot of stories on what we can do to help people through tough times. What about my income just went away? One more story for you. Hey, if your income has been slashed or been cut entirely, we have 17 strategic things that you can do to help. We're not going to go over all of them, but we're going to go over the top three. And the first one is cut expenses immediately. Yeah. Most people jump to pulling money out of their 401k retirement. Big mistake. Second one, speak to a licensed real estate attorney. Hey, that's why we have the webinar coming Exactly, out. and I love this one. All work has dignity. Stay productive, do something, make an income. You want to check out all 17? Click on the link below and send it on to somebody else because you know there's a lot of people facing this problem right now. Okay, it is not easy to catch a dollar. It's not. There is a great Sundance film coming called How to Catch a Dollar. It talks about a man really investing his community, making banking how it should be. Tell it's us called micro-lending, and strange, strange theory, 
lend money out without trying to make money back. It's to help the community. So you don't collateralize it? You just actually help a businessman buy something? No, you can check the trailer below. It's a couple minutes. It's an awesome trailer. It's a new movie coming out, and we're going to go check it out. You're invited to come with us. We'll have the information below, but at the very least, check the trailer out. Yeah, it was really well done. Hey, I'm Gary the Hawk Hawkinson. I'm Ryan Hills, and you know what? Sign up for that webinar. We'll see you shortly. Thanks for watching. Forward, subscribe, comment. Man. We'll see you next week.